Al Danny here from MortgageMarketingCoach.com coming at you with another live episode of the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. And today we're going to talk about something that is often not discussed, but is so incredibly important for anyone who wants to reach for higher ground and achieve outcomes, not just itty bitty little incremental upticks in outcomes, but we're talking monumental, unprecedented result breakthrough outcomes. And if that's you, then there's something we need to talk about. And that is why being realistic and being reasonable is death rattle to success, is death rattle to your breakthrough. Because, I mean, let's just be real. Being realistic and being responsible or another way we put it out there is being reasonable and realistic all sounds really smart, right? We even hear the words from people who say they know what they're talking about and they say if you want to achieve breakthrough results or if you want to be successful you got to set, set smart goals right smart s m a r t specific measurable achievable realistic and timely sound familiar so we hear this a lot and we get this reinforced idea that in order to be successful in life we need to be realistic and we need to be reasonable how often have you heard that, right? We hear it from our parents. Come on now, be realistic. Or come on now, don't be so outlandish. Don't be so naive, be reasonable. Have you not heard that? How many times have you heard that growing up? Come on now, son, or come on now, daughter. It's time to be reasonable. It's time to be realistic. And so we get this programming from childhood that reaching for higher ground and having big, hairy, audacious goals and doing something that maybe has never been done before in our family heritage or never been done in our generation or never been done in our community or never been done in our family network. It's easy for people to squash that, not necessarily because they don't love you, but because they don't want you to feel disappointed. They don't want you to reach for higher ground and then feel like a failure when it doesn't get because they themselves have experienced that. And now they're projecting that on you. They're projecting that on us. So they have well-meaning intent. They love you. They want the best for you. But it's based on an erroneous assumption. We're going to talk about that in a moment. But really what we want to look at is how common this is and how it's actually corroding and undermining our ability to be exceptional, to use our God-given talents and abilities to create breakthrough outcomes and to achieve that which we really want for ourselves and our families. So common ways this crops up is like, you know, I would invest in my own education, but I don't have the money. I need to be realistic. I need to be reasonable or, you know, I get up earlier to go to the gym, but I need my sleep. I mean, to get up that early, that's unreasonable. Or, you know, I would I would make those calls every single day, reaching out to realtors, but, you know, I got a lot going on. I've got all, the, I've got all these different deals I got to babysit and handle, and, you know, I got to be realistic. There's only so much time in the day, right? And so we tell our, ourselves all these things. And what's the common thread amongst all these things? They all reinforce our lack, our scarcity, our inadequacy, our powerlessness, and they reinforce excuses. We end up getting a bad case of excusitis. I'll be real. I'm right there with you. I've had that many a time, and it's often in our blind spot. We don't even realize we're actually putting ourselves in a prison of our own making by telling ourselves these things. I was just talking with uh, someone earlier today and she was saying how she's getting sick. And I was like, you don't want to affirm that. You're getting healthier and you're getting stronger and you're becoming more and more impenetrable to, to disease and sickness and infirmity. She's like, what are you talking about? No, I'm feeling sick. Yeah, but if you affirm that and you say, I always get sick or I'm about to get sick, you're actually reinforcing that which you don't want. And it's the same sort of thing here. When you start speaking, I need to be realistic. I need to be reasonable. It sounds smart and it sounds rational and reasonable. But what it does is it puts us at the effect of as opposed to at the cause of. And that's the paradigm we've got to break if we want to create breakthrough results. So these are the sorts of things you'll hear from people in your office, in your workplace, 
maybe from your employees, maybe from your colleagues, maybe from your, uh, your uh, underlings, if you have any, maybe from your kids, if you have any. You'll hear these sorts of things where it's like, come on now, it's time to be realistic. And these are the sorts of things that crop up and we don't even notice that it's something that's killing our success. But when's the last time you've ever seen anyone extraordinary that you aspire to be, that inspires you, who got there by being realistic? When's the last time you met anyone or saw anyone or witnessed anyone in your life who inspired you to greatness by being realistic, by being reasonable? Chances are it's never happened, has it? Why is that? Because being realistic and being reasonable is the path to mediocrity. That's the path to average. If you want the surest path to be average and be, be me, mediocre, make a habit of being reasonable and realistic. I mean, let's just call a spade a spade. If you look at the people in your life that you are not inspired by, that are just you know good people, but they don't live inspiring lives, I can pretty much guarantee you they're very good at being realistic and being reasonable. Isn't that true? So all that does when we plant that seed and we make it a habit of being realistic and being reasonable, it's reinforcing scarcity, excuses, and limitation in our life. And then we wonder why life is average, our results are average, our income is average, our health is average, our fitness is average, our relationships are average, because we're being realistic and we're being reasonable. Is it possible one of the reasons why your life isn't where, where you want it to be is because you've made it a habit of being realistic and being reasonable? Is that possible? What if that is one of the reasons why you haven't seen your breakthrough yet? Because you've made it a habit of being realistic and being reasonable. Something perhaps you may have not considered yet, but these little shifts in perspective can make all the difference in the world because they all fly, all these realistic and reasonable things we say to ourselves, they all fly in the face of the champion's mantra. What is the champion's mantra? I'm glad you asked. The champion's mantra is I can have it exactly the way I want it if I don't settle. That's worth writing down, by the way. I can have it exactly the way I want it if I don't settle. That is the champion's mantra. That's the mantra of someone who manifests their dreams. I can have it exactly the way I want it if I don't settle. That is flying in the face of all that is reasonable and realistic. Is it not? Again, when's the last time you met anyone of any extraordinary achievement in life who inspires you, who got there by being realistic and reasonable. Chances are nobody because that person does not exist. They got there because they were unreasonable. They got there because they were unrealistic. They got there because they brought unreasonable faith, unreasonable effort, unreasonable excellence, unreasonable drive, unreasonable persistence and they believed it before they ever achieved it. They believed something that perhaps was unprecedented in their family lineage, unprecedented in their community, perhaps even unprecedented in the world, but they were unreasonable and unrealistic. And that was the pathway to being extraordinary. So with that in mind, let's just throw out some examples of people that inspire us to greatness who are examples of being unreasonable and being unrealistic. How about Thomas Edison, the guy that invented the incandescent light bulb? Did you know he failed 10,000 times, so-called 10,000 failures, before he ever dialed it in and got it to work, before he ever invented the light bulb? Now, most people would say that's unrealistic and unreasonable. True? Or how about Nelson Mandela, 27 years in prison he suffered for the sake of liberating his country from the tyranny of apartheid, 27 years. And on top of that, he didn't even hold that against his imprisoners when he was released. 
He forgave them. Talk about being unrealistic and reasonable. That was like half of his life almost. A third of his life sacrificed for the sake of freedom and for the liberation of his people. Talk about being unrealistic and unreasonable. The Wright brothers trying to get a big heavy chunk of metal to defy gravity called the airplane. Never been done before. Talk about being unrealistic and unreasonable. Mother Teresa trying to get one of the most populous nations and most po impoverished nations on the planet, India, to be rid of poverty and to comfort the people that were on the lowest of the lowest of the caste and people who had sicknesses that no one wanted to touch and to liberate those people and to comfort those people. Talk about being unrealistic and being unreasonable. I could keep going and going and going from Roger Bannister who broke the four minute mile barrier, never been done before, to Colonel Sanders who ended up going after failure after failure, even in his 60s and 70s, to do something that most people would say would be unrealistic and unreasonable to start KFC. And you can see this time and time again with the achievers of the world. The signature trait of the extraordinary is that they're unrealistic and unreasonable. And yet we think in our everyday life because of the way we've been programmed, that it's not smart to be unrealistic, that it's not smart to be unreasonable, that that's silly, that that's silly talk. But yet, isn't that interesting that if we follow the herd and do what the herd does, guess what? We end up being mediocre and being average. Imagine that. So notice that anytime there's something that seems rather strange and odd to the average person, if you wanna be extraordinary, chances are it's gonna seem strange and odd. That means you're onto something, friends. That means you're on the right track. That doesn't mean you're off the track, that means you're on the right track. If people think that you're being reasonable and realistic, that's a very bad sign. That means you're just up to nothing. You're up to mediocre, you're up to playing small, you're up to falling into the mold. You're up to just being same as everybody else. Screw that. You're designed for greatness, my friend. You're designed to do something great and to make a real impact in the world that's extraordinary, that leaves a mark of awesome for generations to come. In order for you to live that, in order for you to fulfill that, you've got to step into the habit of being unrealistic and unreasonable. So why is being real, realistic and unreasonable, so ineffective. Why is it indeed death rattle to success? Well, I'll tell you why. The first reason is because it presupposes failure is to be avoided. It presupposes that failure is this abhorrible thing that is to be avoided like the plague. You don't want to make a mistake. You don't want to fail and make you look bad. You'd be humiliated. People, what, do you, what are people going to think, right? I don't want to make a mistake, right? That's going to lower my status. What would people think? And that's exactly what undergirds the mindset of mediocrity. They push back against failure and say, whatever it takes not to fail. But the extraordinary, the champion says, failure is simply feedback. That's simply another opportunity to start again more intelligently. That's just a porthole into more feedback so I can get stronger, sharper, better, wiser. And it's through that feedback, just like Thomas Edison, that allows you to create something that's never been created before, that allows you to achieve something that's never been achieved before. You want to double your speed of success? Well, here's your recipe. Here's your prescription. Double your rate of failure. So one of the reasons why being realistic and reasonable doesn't work is because it presupposes an erroneous belief that failure is to be avoided. And that's just straight BS. That'll keep you small, that will keep you in lack, 
that'll keep you average. And you're not designed for average. You're designed for awesome, not average. True? You better believe it, friends. You're designed for awesome. The second thing that is not viable with being realistic and being reasonable as it relates to reaching for higher ground and achieving success is that it presupposes that you're a victim of circumstance, right? When you're trying to be realistic, you're saying circumstance is X, therefore I must be Y. I don't have money, so I can't do that. I don't come from, I don't have an education, so I can't do that. I don't come from a background that would lend itself to being successful in that, so I can't do that. I need my sleep, so I can't wake up an hour earlier. I can't do that. It's just how I am. I'm a victim of circumstance. I'm a victim to my DNA. I'm a victim to my background. I'm a victim to my parents. I'm a victim to all these things outside of myself. It's not a choice. Notice it presupposes it's not a choice. It puts you as the effect instead of as the cause. And the third big reason why being realistic and being real uh, reasonable rather doesn't work is because it presupposes you can't have it all, that you do have to settle, that you do have to compromise, that there's this give or take thing that sometimes you just got to settle for second best. Sometimes you just got to take kind of whatever is given and, and, and whatever comes your way. And if you want the recipe for mediocrity and for just a so-so life, that's the belief you hold. I can't have it all. I do have to, you know, settle for second best sometimes. Let's be realistic. Let's be reasonable now, right? So this belief is intertwined and inextricably linked with all these limiting beliefs about being at the effect instead of at the cause, about I can't have it all. I can't. I'm at the effect of circumstance. Failure is to be avoided. Heaven forbid I fail, then what? Notice all these limiting beliefs, they all intertwine into a master belief that says, I need to be realistic, I need to be reasonable. And that is death rattle to success, death rattle to fulfillment, death rattle to maximum contribution, death rattle to living an adventurous, fulfilling, joyous, beautiful, juicy life. It's death rattle, all that. It's called mediocre. It's called a boring, mediocre, average life of just settling. Who the frick wants to have a life like that? Not me. Let other people live lives like that, but not me. Let other people live lives like that, but not you. Let other people settle for small dreams, but not you. Let other people be victims of circumstance, but not you. Let other people settle for second best, but not you. You're a champion. You're an achiever. You're a winner. You're destined for greatness. You're destined for something extraordinary. It's time, my friends, to just decide to live the life of being unrealistic and unreasonable and to create something extraordinary that inspires you, that inspires your kids, your kids' kids, that inspires the world because that's how you show up in life. You create something that was never created before out of thin air, just because you know you can have it exactly the way you want it if you don't settle. And if you embrace the belief that you can truly have it the way you want it and that you're at the cause, not the effect, and that you're bigger than your circumstances, you're bigger than anything that might stand in your way and you can choose it and you can have it all. It's not mutually exclusive. It's not one or the other. You can have the great income you want and you can have a lifestyle and freedom. Who says that if you make more money and close more deals, that you're going to have more worries, more anxiety, more stress, and less of a life? Who says? That's the mantra of mediocrity. The mantra of the champion says, I can have it exactly the way I want it if I don't sell. You guys with me on that? So setting small, reasonable, realistic goals causes us to think small, feel small, play small and get small results. Have you noticed? 
when you small, when you set little itty bitty realistic goals, how much does it inspire you to grow? How much does it inspire you to stretch out of your comfort zone? How much does it inspire you to do it when you're not in the mood, when you don't feel like it? How much does it inspire you to dig deep into your soul and draw from the reservoirs of the, the deep, powerful resolve within to rise up and to overcome? None of that. Why? Because you're thinking too small. It's not that people shoot too high and miss. It's that people shoot too low and hit. That's the problem. That's the problem you want to avoid is shooting too low and hitting. On the flip side, when you set big, hairy, audacious goals that inspire you, that scare you and excite you at the same time, all of a sudden now you've got a goal that excites you, that inspires you, that's worth giving your life to. It's not what is, you know, what's a goal that I can achieve? That's not the question. The goal is what's a goal that's worthy of me? What's a goal that's worthy of my time, my energy, my lifeblood, my passion, my creativity? Not what are you worthy of, but what's a goal worthy of you? And when you find something that's worthy of you, I guarantee you, it's going to scare you and excite you at the same time. It's going to light a fire under your ass like never before. It's going to put pep in your step, sparkle in your eye. You're going to get fired up. And you're going to be willing to dig deep in the face of adversity and challenge to achieve it. Get up an hour earlier. Screw it. Let's freaking do it. Yes, it's unreasonable, but champions are unreasonable. Yes, it's unrealistic, but champions are unrealistic. Screw it, let's do it. I'll get up an hour earlier if that's what it takes to make my dream real. Oh, it means I gotta set time aside to do some visualizations and some affirmations even though I don't feel like it? Screw that, that's not a have to, that's a get to. Yes, it's unrealistic to do it every day. Yes, it's unrealistic and unreasonable to do it every day, but screw it, let's do it. I'm a champion. I'm going to do the things most people aren't willing to do, the results most people are going to have tomorrow. And so if we don't reach for high ground, we won't dig deep to achieve it. And it's in the digging deep that we find out who we really are. We found, find out how powerful and how resourceful and how unstoppable and how unlimited we truly are. And that's the greatest gift of being unrealistic and unreasonable. It's not what we just acquire in the bank account. It's not all the stuff we get. It's not all the achievement, the status, the prestige. It's who we become. We can look at ourselves in the mirror and say, God destined me for greatness, to do great things, to be of great service, to do great contribution. And what's so beautiful about this journey is I get to become a better and bigger person every day. I get to become a better version of myself every day. And that's the nectar of life, guys, is becoming a better version of ourselves every day where we feel the thrill and the pride of victory, of achievement, of progress, even in the face of adversity. It's unreasonable to face adversity and say, thank you for the adversity. Thank you for the challenge. Thank you for this obstacle in my way because I know it's an opportunity to grow. I know it's making me stronger. It's making me sharper. It's making me better. Thank you for this challenge. For it's not a stumbling block. It's a stepping stone. It's not a setback. It's a setup. It's setting me up for greatness. If adversity is preparation for greatness, I am being prepared for something great. Bring it on, baby. You think this is going to stop me? You don't know who you're dealing with. You're dealing with Doran freaking Aldana. You talking, you get a, You think you're going to come at me with this problem? It's going to stop me? You have no idea who you're dealing with. I eat problems for freaking breakfast, baby. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Bring it on. Bring on the problems. Understand that kind of philosophy, that kind of way of life is unreasonable and unrealistic. And that's why it makes you extraordinary because everyone else looks up to you as an inspiring role model of someone and 
a lifestyle and a way of being that they aspire to themselves, even perhaps secretly. They might hate on you. They might judge you. They might try to protect you. But deep down inside, they're inspired by you. When you lead by example like this, when you lead by being unrealistic and unreasonable for something worthy of your life, for a mission worthy of your life, for a cause worthy of your life, for an impact worthy of your life. And isn't that what we all want? To have a life worth living that makes a difference in the world, that's an adventure, that may not be easy, but worthwhile. Isn't that what we all strive for? Isn't that what we all have our hearts cry for? And this is the pathway to making that dream real, my friends, being unrealistic and unreasonable. If you don't risk going too far, you'll never know how far you can go. So I want to leave you with a little quote that was made famous by Nelson Mandela, but was originally written by Marianne Wilkinson. And it goes like this. You may have heard it before, but you've never heard it from Doran Aldana. So here it is. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small doesn't serve the world. There's nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine. As children do, we were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It's not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we're liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. So it's time to stop thinking small, friends. It's time to stop being realistic. Screw that. Let other people be realistic and reasonable, but not you. You've got a high and mighty and glorious call on your life. You've got a mission to fulfill that no one else can, can fulfill. Wherever you've been planted, you have an opportunity to make a difference in those people's lives. If you're a parent, you have an opportunity to make a difference in those kids' lives every single day. But how you live and how you lead. If you're a spouse, you have an opportunity to make a difference for that person, to be an inspiration for them, to make them better to lead by example. If you're an employer, you have an opportunity to make a difference in those people's lives. They're looking to you for leadership. They're looking to you for certainty. They're looking to you for vision. Stop playing small, friends. It's time to reach for higher ground. It's time to think unreasonable dreams. If you can conceive it, if you can believe it, you can achieve it. Go for something and don't say to yourself, what am I worthy of? Screw that. Flip it on its head. What's worthy of you? What's worthy of your lifeblood, your passion, your energy, your gifts, your talents? Just decide today, friends, to stop being realistic and reasonable and decide to live an unreasonable and unrealistic life that changes the world one day at a time, one unrealistic and unreasonable choice at a time. It's not about being foolish. It's not about being outlandish or unresponsible. It's about being a stand for something that matters to you and then being willing to do whatever it freaking takes. Come hell or freaking high water, whatever it takes. Dig deep and be willing to make the sacrifices necessary. That's what most people call unrealistic and unreasonable. But you, my friend, understand that you're either gonna pay the pain and the price of discipline, which weighs an ounce, that gives you the glory of victory, or you're gonna pay the price and the pain of regret, of settling for second best, of drifting, of living a mediocre life because you settled. 
Screw that. You're called to greatness, my friends. So if this message speaks to your heart, you feel stirred up to reach for higher ground, and you'd like to get more clarity on how we can help you at MortgageMarketingCoach.com, can help you to reach for higher ground, to live an unrealistic and unreasonable life of extraordinary results in your business with extraordinary income, in your lifestyle with an extraordinary ability to do what you want, when you want, how you want, with whom you want, and to be able to set up a business that's designed to liberate you, not enslave you. If you want to learn more about how we can help you generate more leads, more repeat business, more referral business, attract more quality referral partners, working on your terms, not theirs. You want to learn how to systematize your business. You want to have a systems-based business, not just a you-based business, then I invite you to reach out to us. I invite you to take advantage of a complimentary breakthrough coaching session by going to mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Again, that's mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. And we'll get on the phone with either uh, one of my consultants or myself and yourself, and we'll lift up the hood in your life and your business and look at how we can help you create a breakthrough. If we can help you do that, by all means, we'll show you how. If we can't, for whatever reason, we'll be the first people to tell you to pass on our services and perhaps we'll recommend something else. Either way, you're going to leave the call with massive value, massive clarity, and chances are we'll have some fun as well. So thank you for being with us. I invite you, if you'd like to take that next step to get more clarity, to get more confidence, to get more certainty, and to clarify the bridge on where you can, how you can go from where you are to where you want to be, reach out to us. Book a call. MortgageMarketingCoach.com forward slash apply. Again, this is Doran Aldana for MortgageMarketingCoach.com coming at you from the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. Go forth, take massive action, bring massive positive energy to that action by being unreason unreasonable, unrealistic, and bringing resourcefulness, passion, power, positive expectation. And you, my friend, chances are will get massive, massive results. Make it a great day, guys. Keep being awesome. Love you. And again, the power for you to create that which you want in your life is just to decide. You can have it anything in any way you want in your life if you don't settle. Goodbye, everyone. Peace. Keep being awesome.